Welcome physics people. Thanks for joining me once again for a video to look at the topic of inclined planes. Today we'll be examining a couple of problem solving activities to do with an inclined plane. So you can see in front of you, an inclined plane is simply a wedge if you like, or an incline at a particular angle that has an object placed upon it that's free to move. So as a starting point, let's consider the following situation. Looking at a stationary object sitting on a flat surface. All objects have a force of attraction towards the Earth, and that's what we call our gravitational force, as shown in this particular diagram, Fg. In response to that, the surface pushes back up against the object with what we call a normal reaction force, Fn. The sum of these two forces is zero, because this object isn't accelerating up or down. So we can say that the vector addition of the normal reaction force and the gravitational force is zero meaning that the normal reaction force is equal to the gravitational force, but the negative sign represents it's in the opposite direction, as is shown in the diagram. And of course, in this example, there's no forces pushing left and right, so it's not applicable to consider them. So overall, there's a net force of zero in this situation with an object sitting flat on a surface. We can improve the expressions by replacing Fg, the force due to gravity, by the equation mg, which is how you calculate the gravitational force. So we can update these equations with mg. Okay, now let's consider our inclined plane. So we have here an object sitting on an inclined plane with an angle theta. You'll notice in the top left corner, instead of considering forces up, down, left and right, we're now considering forces that are down the plane, up the plane, and perpendicular to the plane. This makes our mathematics a lot easier. So first of all, let's draw in our forces. We have a gravitational force once again, operating straight down. A normal reaction force. Now, the word normal means 90 degrees. So the normal remains at an angle of 90 degrees to the surface. So unlike our first scenario on a flat surface, the normal reaction force and the gravitational force are no longer equal and opposite. They don't physically cancel each other out anymore. We can resolve or break down our gravitational force into two components. First of all, you have gravitational component that's perpendicular to the surface, which is by basic right angle trigonometry, Fg cos theta. And a second force component, Fg sine theta, is the component of the gravitational force operating down the plane. So we've now resolved or broken down Fg into its two components that are now following the convention of perpendicular to the plane and parallel or up and down the plane. Let's break them down. So this is a true indication of the forces that are occurring on this particular object, both parallel and perpendicular to the plane. If we consider the forces that are perpendicular, we see that the normal reaction force is equal but in opposite direction to the weight component that's perpendicular to the plane, Fg cos theta. So the sum of those two forces is equal to zero. From this, we can say the normal reaction force is equal to Fg cos theta, but in the negative direction, opposite direction. The forces parallel to the plane, what we have is Fg sine theta. That's the only force acting parallel to the plane, acting down the plane. So the symbol we have here is parallel, or we can sometimes label it force down the plane, dp. That is the only force operating in the direction of the acceleration down the plane, so that is, in fact, the net force, Fg sine theta. So in summary, we have an equation for the normal reaction force. We have an equation for the force down the plane, which is in this case the net force operating on the object. And we also can use Newton's second law for the net force, ma, to end up with an equation for the acceleration down the plane, which is a equals g sine theta. Here's our summary equations. Now note, these three equations are used for a frictionless inclined plane. Let's apply them to a scenario. So task number one. A 10 kilogram object is placed on a frictionless inclined plane at 30 degrees. So we can see here 30 degrees, and we can see here our object. There's a normal reaction force operating, there's a component of the weight, mg sine theta, going down the plane, and there's a component of the weight, mg cos theta, which operates in an opposite direction to the normal reaction force perpendicular to the plane. And of course we have our summary of equations available. We want to calculate the object's normal reaction force, the net force in the object, and the object's acceleration. So let's complete these three tasks. First of all, the normal reaction force. We can see the equation that's available, Fn equals mg cos theta. We write that out, and we sub in our values. The mass of 10, 
the gravitational field strength on Earth of 9.8, and the angle, of course, is 30 degrees. Sub that in, that tells us the normal reaction force is 84.9 newtons perpendicular to the plane, pushing from the surface of the plane upon the object. Next, we're asked to calculate the net force, and we're using the equation F net equals mg sine theta, which is only applicable for an inclined plane that is frictionless. So F net equals mg sine theta. Chuck in our values. M equals 10, G equals 9.8 newtons per kilogram, and the angle was 30 degrees. That tells me the net force is 49 newtons down the plane. Finally, we're asked to work out the acceleration A equals G sine theta. So G is 9.8 meters per second per second, free fall due to gravity, and the angle was 30 degrees. That gives an acceleration down the plane of 4.9 meters per second per second. Quite simple to do when we're using an inclined plane without friction. Let's consider scenario two, which is exactly the same scenario. However, we've added a friction force of 10 newtons. This can be shown in our diagram. Here's our friction force. Same approach again. We want to calculate the object's normal reaction force, the object's net force, the acceleration of the object. Let's examine the equations that we have available to us. So the force of the normal is still mg cos theta. The force down the plane, the component of the weight force operating down the plane, is mg sine theta. We need to do a little bit more work when we work out net force and acceleration in this example. But let's have a go. First of all, our normal reaction force. Using the equation Fn equals mg cos theta. Exactly the same approach as previous. It hasn't changed. The normal reaction force is 84.9 newtons perpendicular to the plane. Let's look at the net force. To calculate the net force, we must consider all forces operating parallel to the plane. So we have mg sine theta pulling down the plane, and opposing that, we have the force of friction going up the plane. Friction always occurs in an opposite direction to the motion of the object. So in this case, it's going up the plane. So the net force is the force down the plane minus the opposing force of friction. We can sub in our values. Force down the plane is mg sine theta, and then we can do our calculations. Where the mass is 10, gravity is 9.8, the angle is 30 degrees, and we're told in the question that the force due to friction is 10 newtons. That ends up being 39 newtons down the plane. Note in this scenario, the net force is not just simply mg sine theta, because we have to consider the opposing force due to friction. We have to look at this question in the context as presented. Finally, we want to work out the acceleration. We know the net force down the plane is 39 newtons. And we know the net force is equal to m times a, following Newton's second law. And so to find the acceleration, we divide 39, the net force, by the mass of the object, which was 10, giving us an acceleration down the plane of 3.9 meters per second per second. These questions are not too tricky, as long as one, you have a diagram, two, you label it correctly, and three, you think about the physics operating in terms of forces up and down the plane and perpendicular to the plane. You've been watching a Juddy Productions video. If you've enjoyed and indeed learned something from this video, then please remember to like, share, comment, and subscribe. And as always, thanks for watching.